The John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and Museum is dedicated to the memory of our nation's 35th president and to all those who, through the art of politics, seek a new and better world. But it's more than just a research center or a repository for the presidential papers. It's a museum with a social mission. I'm Jenny Johnson for Comcast Newsmakers. At Suffolk University's downtown Boston studio, JFK Library Foundation CEO Heather Campion is my guest. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Happy to be here. So let's talk about how the two work together. There's the Kennedy Library and Museum, and then there's the foundation. How do they complement one another? Yes, well, one thing people don't know, there are 13 presidential libraries in the country, and the National Archives preserves and protects the papers of the presidents. So what is at the John F. Kennedy Library are all his papers, all of his furnishings, all, every gift that he ever received, all of his report cards, all of his speech drafts. So it's kind of fun to think that that's right here in Boston. Mm -hmm. And that's run by the library. The Presidential Library Foundations exist to promote the work of the library, but also the legacy of the president, and that's what we do. Okay, so tell us the social mission of the museum and the foundation. Well, our mission, as I said, is to preserve the past so we can debate our future, to give access as broadly as we can to citizens for this important moment in history, and hopefully it will inspire people to carry on and take up um, various missions and causes of their own. Okay, so what happens at the library? Lots of things happen at the library. The first thing is we have a museum that's been newly renovated that just opened a few weeks ago. For the first time in 20 years, we renovated the museum and brought lots of new interactives and technology. So I would encourage anyone to come and see it. We've digitized and enhanced all the films of President Kennedy's iconic speeches. They're on big screens, so you get to experience President Kennedy in a whole new way. Because remember now, 50 years right. plus past his presidency, over 80% of people in the world have no living memory of him. So you mentioned how you're digitizing things. So the library is really in the forefront of creating the digital archives and making the research available. So talk about how important this use of technology is. It's very important because, of course, it enables people all over the world to access President Kennedy's papers and writings and thinking. And in fact, the John F. Kennedy Library has the most sophisticated online digitization project of any of the presidential libraries. We were the first to do it. So you can go to our website and you can find amazing things on our website. For example, you can type in the Cuban Missile Crisis. You can see his doodles from the Cuban Missile Crisis wow. meetings. You can hear the tapes, the secretly recorded tapes from the cabinet meetings and the deliberations. You can go and um, see the drafts of the speeches that he wrote and delivered to the American people. And you can see the video of the speeches. So that's all on our website and that's the purpose of digitizing all of these papers. So that people more broadly can have access. The other thing I'll note is we've built out our website mm -hmm. so that not only can you access many of his most important papers, but also we're now beginning to do it in different languages. We've just wow. um, put in a Japanese section of our website where there are a lot of these things accessible in Japanese. So and we much hope to do many languages. For so many people, that's yes. incredible. Now, the Edward M. Kennedy Institute recently opened right next yes. to the museum. Very exciting. So are these two connected? Um, only in spirit. Okay. Uh, the Edward M. Kennedy Institute is a private institution. The John F. Kennedy Presidential Library is a public-private partnership, as I've just described. Um, but it's making Columbia Point a very exciting and dynamic place. The Edward M. Kennedy Institute, as you know, is devoted to teaching people about the United States Senate. Mm -hmm. And it's all interactive. It's all virtual. Everyone that walks in the front door gets an iPad. It's wow. fabulous. The other thing I should mention on Columbia Point is the state of Massachusetts archives has the Commonwealth Museum free and open to the public which has one of the original copies of the Bill of Rights so you can come to Columbia Point and see 300 years of history in these three institutions. Wow. Now JFK was elected president 55 years yes. ago which is hard to believe but he's still such an enormously popular figure and president as is his wife so what do you think is so fascinating about JFK? You know, I've thought about it a lot because he remains every year in the Gallup polls the most popular president of the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. And I think I saw something recently in our museum um, in the Kennedy-Nixon debates, President Kennedy said, I don't believe there's anything this country cannot do. Mm -hmm. And if you think he was only president for two and a half years and how much he accomplished with the space program, achieving a nuclear test ban treaty, um, so much for the arts, it was quite extraordinary. It is extraordinary. Well, Heather, thanks so much for sharing a bit about the foundation with us today. Thank you. Thanks for watching Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Jenny Johnson.